This is Grit in a Workshop Predatory Behavior in NA. My name is Tina and I am an addict. Hey, hey Tina. Tina. Welcome to Grit in the 40, Lost Dreams Awaken, into our workshop, Predatory Behavior in NA. Since Grit in the 40 is in the Georgia region's first, no, since Grit in the 40 is the Georgia region's first hybrid convention, allow me to address the issue of anonymity for those joining us online. <laughs> When joining a virtual meeting, you will need to keep your video turned off to guarantee anonymity. If you turn your video on, you are choosing to be seen by other participants. You can also change your name or switch to first name plus last initial to protect your identity. Let's open this meeting with a moment of silence followed by a serious prayer. God, God. God. grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Welcome to Georgia Region's first hybrid convention, Britain of 40, Lost Strings Awaken. Our intention of this convention is to make available to our fellowship a weekend of recovery, celebration, and fun. We hope that all addicts receive the NA message of recovery while they are participating in this event. It is our hope that the message we carry may truly let everyone know that NA is a place to recover and that no addict seeking recovery need die from addiction. These are the workshop participation guidelines. If you're joining us virtually, please dress appropriately on camera. Please keep your microphone on mute unless you are asked to unmute by the host or co-host. If you have a question and need general assistance during the workshop, please contact the host or one of the co-hosts via direct message in chat. If there is time after our workshop speakers finish, you may have an opportunity to share your experience, strength, and hope on the workshop topic. If you would like to share virtually, please raise your virtual hand. Your virtual hand can be raised by going to the reactions icon on your computer or by going to the more section of the phone. If you would like to share here in person, please raise your hand. You will be asked to come up to the microphone and camera so those at home can hear and see you. The virtual host and co-host and I will attempt to maintain you correctly. Your kindness and patience will be greatly appreciated. Please limit your share to three to four minutes. I have asked for volunteers for our readings. If someone would please read. If you want what we have to offer and are willing to make the effort to get it, then you are ready to take certain steps. These are the principles that made our recovery possible. One, we admitted that we were powerless over our addiction, that our lives had become unmanageable. Two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to eternity. Three, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God mm -hmm. as we understood them. Four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our body. Six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Seven, we humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Eight, we made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Nine, we made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Ten, we, um, ten, we continued to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. 11. We sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious content with God as we understood, praying only for knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry that out. 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to addicts and to practice these principles in all of our efforts. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. This, You can reach back too. We don't have a solution. This sounds like a big order and we can't do it all at once. We didn't become addicted in one day, so remember, there is one thing more than anything else that will defeat us in our recovery. This is an attitude of indifference or intolerance towards spiritual principles. Three of these that are in this principle are honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. With these, we are well on our way. 
We feel that our approach to sympathy to addiction is completely realistic for the therapeutic value of one addict helping another is without parallel. We feel that our way is practical for one addict to best understand and help another addict. We believe that the sooner we face our problems within our society and everyday living, just that much faster do we become acceptable, responsible, and productive members of that society. The only way to keep from returning to active addiction is not to take that to itself. If you are like us, you know that one is too many and a thousand never enough. We put great emphasis on this, for we know that when we use drugs in any form or substitute one for another, we release our addiction all over again. Thinking of alcohol as different from other drugs has caused a great many addicts to relapse. Before we came to NA, many of us viewed alcohol separately. But we cannot afford to be confused about this. Alcohol is a drug. Period. We are people with the disease of addiction who must abstain from all drugs in order to recover. Thank you, Annie. I'm Josh. I'm Annie. Hey, hey Josh. Josh. This is the drug This is the NA. We keep what we have on the vigilance. <clears throat> and this is freedom for the individual comes from the first step. <laughs> So freedom for the group, strength from our traditions. As long as the ties bind us together, strong and no good tears apart, all will be well. One, our common welfare should come first. Personal recovery depends on the eight units. Two, for our group's purpose, there is but one ultimate authority that will be guided to express himself in our group conscience. Our leaders are for trusted service, they do not govern. <clears throat> Three, the only requirement for membership is the desire to stop movement. Four, each group should be autonomous except for matters affecting other groups or in as a whole. Five, each group has one primary purpose to carry the message to the attitude still suffers. Six, <clears throat> an NA group are never endorsed, finance, or lend an NA to any related facility or outside enterprise. Less problems of money, property, and prestige divert us from our primary purpose. Seven, every NA group ought to be fully self supporting and finding outside contributions. Eight, our cards and should remain very non professional, but our service centers may enjoy social workers. Nine, and as such, I'll never be organized, but we make great service boards or committees directly responsible for those they serve. Ten, our cards and has no opinion on outside issues, can't stand in any on every drawn into public controversy. Eleven, our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. We need always maintain personal anonymity at the level of the press, radio, and film. 12. And the is the spiritual foundation of all our traditions, ever remind us to place principles before personalities. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Our speakers for the meeting today are Patrick G. and Joanna. Jonna. Jonna. I have a sister named Jonna. She's got that. Jonna C. <coughs> All right. Well, hey, family. My name is John, and I'm an addict. Hey, John. And um, I would like to thank the um, region for inviting me to be here today. You know, when I was asked to come be of service, I was like, well, of course I will, because, you know, that's what I was taught early on in Narcotics Anonymous. If somebody asks you to serve, then you commit. And so I committed and didn't even ask what the topic was. And, you know, <laughs> when they sent me the topic, I was like, ha ha, he's got jokes. And, uh, you know, <laughs> then I talked to somebody else. And they was like, no, this is where you're going to be at. So I was like, OK, God, my understanding has jokes today. You know, like he's like, OK, we're going to reflect and we're going to take your own inventory. and We're going to look back on this stuff and see what's really went on. And uh, so what I did is today I'm practicing the courage to come up here and speak to you guys about um, some of my life experiences and then also some things that I learned through doing a little bit of research on predatory behavior in Narcotics Anonymous, you know, and uh, the first thing that I found was that, you know, some traditions back this up and, you know, it's going to start with Tradition 10, which is a uh, Narcotics Anonymous has no opinion on outside issues since NA name ought never be drawn into public controversy. So when we think about that, we think about this topic in particular being an outside issue, you know. Um, I know a lot of areas in our state, my area specifically, has had a lot of predatory behavior going on in it. You know, we'll see old timers preying on the newcomers. We'll actually see the newcomers preying on the old comers, old timers. So it works both ways, you know, and uh, what, you know, I have to remember in us as a whole is that, you know, Tradition 5 says that each group has a primary purpose to carry the message to the addict that still suffers. So what message would I be carrying 
you know, if I'm hitting on every newcomer that comes in the room, you know, um, I can share a little bit about, you know, some of my experiences, but the first thing that I thought was kind of reflective was that the behavior is inclined or intended to injure or exploit others for personal gain or profit, you know, and so I meditated on that for a little bit, you know, and I was like, okay, what was the personal gain in the beginning, you know, and um, I got this little pamphlet here that I printed off and I started reading about that. And so I think about the three stages of this as like being the predator, being the prey, and, you know, being a witness to all of these kinds of behaviors, you know, and, um, you know, I've been preyed upon, you know, I used to share my home group. I was married for 18 years when I got to Narcotics Anonymous. I got clean. My spouse did not. Needless to say, I was going into the rooms, sharing transparently with the group. Later on, you know, the DM started hitting up. Hey, you want to go out, you know, and have some dinner? And, you know, um, what I've seen through what I checked on is like, when that happened, I was like, dude, you know, I'm still a married woman, you know, and when you call one of us out on that type of behavior, we automatically twist it to somewhere else. Oh, I meant for the whole group, you know, when we go out to eat, I mean, all of us, you know, like, no, hell you didn't, <laughs> no, hell you didn't, you know, but that's okay, you know, we're going to go ahead and shut that down while we're at, and, um, you know, that did kind of make me feel kind of raw you know because like I trusted this person because they were coming to the meeting that I had been in since I first got clean you know I've been in the rooms of narcotics and almost a little while and uh, you know he was an old timer probably had twice as much time as I do and you know I didn't consider myself a newcomer at the time and I never considered myself as a victim because I had to overcome that victim mentality you know when I came into narcotics anonymous I've been in abusive relationships, mentally and physically, you know, and so Narcotics Anonymous to me is my safe space, so if I can't come in here and tell y'all the shit that's going on in my life outside of these rooms, and, you know, expect that you guys are going to honor that with a little bit of uh, grace, then, you know, the rooms are no longer safe, you know, and that's what it means when we talk about, you know, the primary purpose is to carry the message to the addict who still suffers well that day I was the addict that was suffering you know so you're gonna hit me up in my dm that night after I didn't come in there and pour my heart out mm -hmm. you know and um you know there's several areas I guess that you know for me as an individual that you know I had to look at through this and you know we my little sponsorship family, we're a little kind of sick, you know, and we're kind of vulgar. And, uh, you know, we play, you know, we kind of play with each other around, but like, it's not in the measure that this is talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not in the kind that's going to run people out. This is the kind that can be that guy that hits on every newcomer walks through mm -hmm. the door. You know, or that woman that hits on every newcomer that walks through the door. You know, it could be that newcomer that's looking for that sugar daddy that's sitting in that room. Hey, I need some cigarettes. Mm -hmm. You know, hey man, can you buy my dinner tonight? You know, and I've I've been in that position too. You know, uh, I've been here, like I said, a little while. So all of these areas, you know, I've been able to cross. And I was reading in that pamphlet, man. And it says that I can't rationalize, I can't rationalize my behaviors by saying they've been here before. Well, my husband's sitting on the front row, you know, he'd been in Narcotics Anonymous before. Well, they kind of make jokes, everybody that's around, I knew him previously, he went back out, he came back in, and they make jokes saying that 13th stepped him, you know, because I was an old timer. Well, I was reading in this little pamphlet here that told me that, guess what, guys? I'm that predator, mm. you know, I'm that predator, even though he had been here before, you know, I hit him when he first came back in, you know, and I didn't look at it like that, 
at that time. I didn't look at it like that till a couple of nights ago when we was reading over it. And I was like, shit. <laughs> so I was the predator, baby. <laughs> and, uh, you know, luckily, luckily he stood strong, you know, and, uh, you know, he wouldn't get in a relationship uh, until he got some steps up under his belt. But, you know, I was persistent. Mm -hmm. I was calling him, I was riding his tail, we was going to the same meetings, we was actually riding the meetings together, but, you know, I was that one, you know, like, I did not leave it be, I just kept, you know, I kept on him, I kept on him, you know, today we're married, we've been married for two years, but, uh, <laughs> you know, in the beginning, you know, I didn't see that as a problem, but after I read a little bit further up on it, I found out that, you know, I was a predator as well. So, you know, I've been preyed on, I've been the predator, and I've also been a witness to a lot of predator behavior mm -hmm. in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't matter if I'm married. It don't matter if I have a significant <laughs> other. It don't matter how much clean time I have. It's about like the disease of addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, it has no rest there. You know, it doesn't escape any of us. I did learn through this process that if we're going to approach a predator within our rooms that we need to treat it as a 12-step call mm. that we need to get together as people to protect the newcomers and the people in our fellowship is the group's primary purpose to make sure if we see this kind of behavior for two or more of us to get together pull that person to the side and address this behavior and I was like, you know what? Mm. That's the information that needs to be shared in a mm. workshop of Narcotics Anonymous. How do we deal with this type of behavior? You know, because for me being a selfish, self-centered addict, you know, I didn't see my behavior at the time. But if somebody would have came up to me and said, hey, girl, give that boy a chance to recover, you know, I might have been like, hmm, you got a point, you know. And if somebody would have approached that man that had approached me and said, hey, you see that she's broken, you know? Why are you praying? Like, we made a joke about it, but why are you praying on the broken girl in the back with the drag leg, you know? Like, seriously, that's what it is, you know? When you see somebody that's raw and hurting and you manipulate and you take advantage of and you use it for your greater good, that's when we have a problem in Narcotics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's our responsibility as members of this fellowship to address these things face on, you know, regardless of what it looks like. And um, that's what I've learned through this process. Um, it was very interesting, you know, because um, I played all three roles, you know, I didn't realize that until I started doing the research on it. And it was like, well, you know, now I owe my husband amends. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't see so, but, you know, <laughs> but, you know, when I look back on it, I have to check myself, you know, that's what this program teaches me to do. It teaches me to work that 10th step every single day, take that inventory of myself mm. and right my wrongs, you know, and that's what this program has taught me to do. And today I get to take ownership of all of that. And today I can be that person that gets together with other people in my fellowship that like goes and does that little 12 step call and protects the people that are inside that fellowship. It's not okay. It's not okay because we're here to, you know, show that an addict, any addict can quit using, lose the desire to use, and find a new way to live. That's right. You know, that's right. Message is hope and a promise is freedom. Mm. You can't be free if you got somebody humping your leg. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you really can't. You know, what are you going to do? You're going to try to fill that void with that outside validation. You know, when we come in, we're trying to fill that hole. That hole needs to be filled with the fellowship, the higher power, mm. the sponsorship, the connection, the group. And if that's not a safe place, what's going to happen? We'll go back out there. Because I can do that shit on the street. Mm -hmm. This is supposed to be my safe place. But uh, I love you guys. And that's all I got. Thanks for letting me share. Thank you for sure. <laughs> Patrick, I'm an addict. Hey, I was hoping you would just talk the whole time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, 
yeah you were talking about it being a you thought it was a joke the topic and i was kind of in the same spot i was like okay this is going to be fun like are they going to find one of the predators and get them to share on how does that work and then i just got asked to do it and i was like what <laughs> what the fuck is going on um but then i was like oh shit i <laughs> right it's an interesting day but um and then you gave me this and i was like okay so i have experience with some of this right like i've not me, but I came in married and my, my wife got preyed on and I'm now I'm not married. Right. So I was like, okay, I have different version of it. I was like, am I a predator? Like, okay, maybe it's not just that, right. There's the prey and the predator and the, the witness. And I was like, that's cool. Okay. I got experience with that. And I hate speaking. So I'm a little nervous and fine, yeah, I'm going to work through it. But, um, in ADD. So like the thoughts get everywhere. I had so much, I, I loved what you shared related to a lot of it. Um, I was supposed to take notes so I could remember to repeat some of it, but um, so I came in and I went to my first convention and this good talking motherfucker, you know what I mean? It was cool. And I was like, hey, go, I got to I got put in a workshop my first 90 days in at a convention. I was like, you're a speaker now. I was like, what the fuck, dude? So we did it, but I was like, hang out with this guy, right? And he'll show you around. He's a good dude. He's got some time. And then um he was one of those guys that preyed on like the girls in like bad spots in their relationships like we were going through a rough patch because i got clean she didn't no longer married right long story there but like with like got to see some of that early on and like the predators and like when i was out there using at the i'm six four right so i've got like a big guy complex so like when there was a dude one of our girlfriends was getting beaten on like i was one of the dudes we would go and handle that situation and um so i came in here and like I want to protect the ladies and I, my great grandpa this junkie ass junkie he's always called himself um he moved away recently but he he was talking about it like they're our sisters right like we got to come in and protect them mm -hmm. i was like okay I, sure and then i seen this happen i was like oh that's like a thing because i was thinking like like child molesters and shit right like predators like that and i'm like that's an outside issue kind of like you said it's not but didn't relate it to the na rooms and then like at the, then I'm divorced and in, in the rooms and trying to fill this hole, right? And then I'm like, okay, I got, you know, that's not drugs. I go fucking find some attention. And um, then started doing steps and got a sponsor and stuff and realized that like I was doing, like not in a manipulating way, which was on the notes there. I'm like not trying to convince anybody, or not trying to pray on them, but like they were new, I was new, like it was still, mm-hmm. And I um, was like, oh shit, like, and then he started talking about the sister stuff. And so then I became, that's where the witness thing comes around. Like I came to start like taking that mindset from protecting <coughs> the girls out there in like beating situations and stuff to like, okay, this is really happening. Like I just went through it and like, I don't think anybody should go through this, right? Like people are gonna date and stuff, but not in any kind of predatory sense, right? Like if people wanna get together, that's different. So we started, I started like washing out after him, like, like treating him like my little sisters. And, and like, that was this huge turning point for me when he said it like that. I was like, okay, like I'm single, like I want to date, but like give them a year, right? Like give them some steps, like do all that morally and properly and then watch out for him. Right. So like, I'm not, I don't know. That's cool. You talk about being a 12 step where like, I didn't know that until just now, but like I would, talk to the girls about it. like, Hey, that's the one watch out for them, you know, or these are the, you know, just kind of give them a forewarning. I'm very confrontational. So I didn't want to go and talk to the predator. Like that's out of my hands. Cause when this happened with my ex-wife, I'm in my, my garage, my sponsor reminds me of this all the time. And I took a two by four and shaved it into a bat. Cause he was like cutting grass in my neighborhood and shit. And I'm like, you know, taking care of some shit, but I was like, I can't live like that anymore. That's not the way to do it. Um, I think I saw that shit in some movie. I was like, I'm going to fucking make my bad go <laughs> too, too much shit. Right. So now we look after them. Right. And we, and we do. And like, there's, there are the, they're all predators. Right. But there's real predators. Right. So like in here, we know people and make connections. We end up finding people's records out. Right. And then I'm like, okay, you're about to date this dude with kids. You have kids know this, please know this and then make your decision. Um, so now it's, it's that it's trying to, make sure I'm not on this list, right? Like 
like I said, giving people time and, and making sure all my intentions are, are pure. Um, watching out for the new girls or anybody, all the, you know, the girls or the dudes. I've got uh, one sponsee that's, that's gay, right? Like make sure he knows what's going on. And there's people that are in the room spraying on anything. Just keep an eye out for it. Um, maybe get into doing it like a 12 step thing. Like, Hey, it's not going to stop if you don't know about it. Right, because the, the dude that I figured out the dude that did it to me was a predator and learned about some of this because I found out it was a pattern when I was sharing about it. I was like, oh, he did this to me and this one too and this one too. And I'm like, oh, this is a fucking thing. This is real. I didn't really see that a lot in my life before NA. Or it happens, you don't know about it. It's under radar or whatever. Um, so it was interesting. But... Yeah, the predator, prey, and witness. And then, yeah, now I see a lot of it. Like, I've seen the guy that's kind of watching with every newcomer, kind of go talk. I'm like, what business do you have talking to this chick? She's new. You got nothing. You know, I mean, you're not going there like, hey, do you need rides to meet? You know, there's no pure intention there. Um, so, I don't know. I don't have any big profound shit to say. That's kind of my experience, strength, and hope on it. I'm not going to talk for 30 minutes. Um, but uh, I appreciate the committee and being thrown in and getting the practice and courage, like you talked about. Um, it was cool to sit and actually think about the experience on it. Like what I do, I have seen it. I've been a part of it. I've had it happen to me. So I have all three of these, which is cool. I did not know this was a pamphlet. So the NA, is this NA, right? Yeah. So there's an NA pamphlet, predatory behavior. Um, and it should be talked about, right? Like there's definitely... We've got enough shit going on. We don't need that shit too, right? Like there's, sh it should be fixed and helped and, and aware, right? Because I didn't even know that was a thing until I got here. I didn't know to look out for that when I'm like, hey, wife, go hang out with this dude. You're cool. Like it's, I set it up. You know what I mean? I put that shit in motion. Um, we're friends now. I'm happily not married. Um, <laughs> we get along great. We have a daughter. You know I mean? It, it worked out. It pushed us where we needed to be today. But, and that same guy, um, he's, he died recently, but at the world convention three years ago, he made amends to me. And like, we were friends after that. Like we got past that and shit. And that's the beautiful part about recovery. Like, I think he had worked on himself and stopped doing that stuff. And, you know, I wasn't going to invite him over for the barbecue, but we made peace. And like, that was huge for me and him, like to be at that spot. And like, it can, like some of the child stuff, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ever okay with that. But like some of the stuff, I'm like, okay, you changed. Like it's, it can, it can get better. Right. And that's the 12 steps and sponsorship mm -hmm. and, and all that. Um, that's all I got. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs>
gender whatever thing um and there's almost a standard of preying on the newcomers and so we talk about like we want to think about our behavior blah 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 like what have i done um and and i don't know how to draw a line but for me i really have seen a standard of not respecting a person's right to recover in some groups and what i perceive is that uh basically in those groups the healthy people the people who are truly practicing recovery go away because they recognize that it's not something that will help them and so i've even and this is my experience so like not naming meetings but i've been aware of two meetings where i don't hear the message of recovery and i see this really like hurtful behavior and i see the people who this happens to i've seen the newcomers leaving you know and and at that level i think it actually really affects several traditions which i was looking at <laughs> but one of them is of course the primary purpose um for the newcomer but then there's also it does affect na as a whole and for me i see that as you know this meeting is still on the na schedule if i look up the na schedule and i say wow i really need a meeting i'm trying to recover and i go to one of these meetings that's really been abandoned by people who are practicing the program and where it's really just the standard of activity that's really not NA. Like if I see that on the schedule and I go there, then I get a certain impression of NA and I very much get the impression that NA will not help me. So to me, it like very much affects um, NA as a whole. And then there was one other tradition I was looking at. But yeah, it's also an outside issue because NA become I'll, I'll, I'll don't think about that one, but for me, it really, it really does affect NA as a whole and it really gets in the way. And so in this case, it's not just, you know, one person is, you know, pursuing a person, but this type of standard when it takes over a meeting, again, it drives, drives people away and takes away the opportunity for someone to recover. It's not just um, not offering it to them. It's not just like not quite doing right. It's literally like, taking away that option like it might be the last house on the block and it's there's no, it does it's not a house on the block for them anymore you know it's like they're like i've i've been there i've experienced that and it doesn't work and i have nothing you know so that's that that type of thing that's why it's really really important to me to talk about and you know i've talked to other people about what can be done about this because to me when it begins to affect na as a whole that's something that na as a whole you know, needs to be concerned about. It's not just on the group level. So, you know, I don't know what ideas we have for solutions or anything. I like to try to come up with ideas, but yeah, I, I kind of want to talk about that, that to me, it's not just something for the group to deal with once it reaches a certain level, um, because it does, it literally drives away newcomers. It takes away the opportunity to recover. So it's not exactly a question. I had a comment, so that's it. Thank you. <laughs> just and, and I don't remember ever talking about this or ever having a workshop or this ever being discussed um and so when 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 this was going on mm -hmm. and then in my gut I just started feeling like I wanted to share mm -hmm. and um and the thing about this too it's not like the predatory behavior like what really it 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 it, it rung true to me is like not necessarily me and me being in recovery but like my old behavior mm -hmm. you know um sometimes i think about things and, and it hurts my stomach like ooh, you know i did that and it's all i mean and you know so how do i make amends to that right what do i do about things like that and so like you know what i what i do is just like you know i acknowledge things um you know and i don't want to just like pan it off to like oh i was fucked up i was you know the thing about it is like it's generational too because i was taught like that you know i was taught i was taught uh, certain behaviors to go out and get as much as you can and go after this and mm -hmm. cheat on your this and never be faithful and all this stuff and you know always try to get some and that would make sure you a man and this and that and that's what was drilled into my head you know and 
I've seen it from my dad to my uncles. I never met my grandfather, but you know, they've taught, they've learned it from somebody else. And then, uh, and then my, you know, and then plus, and then my mom, you know, there was just dysfunctionality on both sides. You know, there was, you know, uh, um, you know, like incest with, you know, the things going on. There's also like, you know, there's predatory things within family and just, and it's just chaotic, man, you know? And it's just the kind of thing is it's like, to bring it up at a group level is like, you know, that that's real. Um, those are real issues that I know that for me that I've had to work through, you know, that I, that I don't necessarily bring up in, in group group level to talk to my sponsor about it. And if I'm on a group level, I'm never going to go out, stand up and talk about like sexual things or what I'm going to, that's just, to me, it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And plus with like with the women in here, I don't want to talk about that because it makes it, I, I don't, it just makes it uncomfortable. But with me, by, and I have a, I feel like I have a good recovery. I really do. Mm -hmm. But when I say this, and I, if I were to say like, oh, this is my recovery, and I do this and that, and I'm so proud, of this, that's all good and everything. But I'm a fucking mess. Like when I came in here, I was a mess, man. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a totally different man. And like the things that I've done before, they hurt my stomach when I think about it. You know, because I didn't have any conscience, and I would just do those things. You know. And so, like, coming into Narcotics Anonymous, man, and, and, like, starting to get freedom from that, it just doesn't go away. I mean, you know, I, I got some time clean, too. And, like, you know, for me to, me to be able to stand up here and, and be honest about that, and I don't have to get into description. You guys know what I'm talking about. You know, we all live that life. You know, the majority of us, it's not like it's a, it's not like it's a foreign thing. But, like, you know, there's freedom to that, to, like, I know that if, if I'm in a room and, if, and, you know, there's attractive women everywhere, okay, and my natural, my natural thought was like, oh, she's attractive, this is not, but you know, there, but when I don't act on those impulses, like to me, it's a victory and I have victories all the time, you know, because mm -hmm. it hasn't gone away. I'm not an angel, you know, but like, I do my best. Like, I don't, I don't like asking women for their numbers for it. Cause it's like that. Oh no, we're all going to come to the party. Don't worry. Yeah. Everybody's going to be there. Not mm -hmm. just me and you, no. you know, like, like, I don't want that shit to happen. You know, I don't like to, I don't like to stand up in front of a woman if she's sitting down and make her feel uncomfortable. I don't like to. You know, I try to, you know, I mean, I hug women if I know them. I don't like to be the first aggressor, you know, the first aggressor. That's just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, that just came out. It's like, shit. So, you know, I got a lot of work to do. That's what I'm saying, too. You know what I mean? I got a lot of work to do. And, like, this is a great topic, man. This is a great workshop. So I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate you standing up. And it was great for doing your research, John. I really appreciate it. And uh, you guys have a great time. Thanks Thank for the show. Thank you, John. Oh yeah, look at that. Hey, my name is Dee and I'm an addict. Hey. Hey. So um I have experience with um being all three as well, right? Um and it's not something I'm proud of either. And it it does it like kind of what John or whatever last person sharing was just saying it like fucks your gut up, like hearing about this and like, cause it's not stuff that we're proud of, you know? Um, and it's, and it took me a while to see that that's what I did in the past, kind of like what the first speaker was sharing about. And you both did really great. Thank you both for sharing. Um, but especially what I want to talk about is what the first speaker was like something you said. And I was like, damn, that's what I should have done. Um, is treating it like a 12 step call when we see it. Right. Like, so when I came in, uh, I was really unfiltered and, um, some of you in this meeting know what I'm talking about that I'm probably about to share about, but, uh, <coughs> I decided to take it upon myself when I had sponsees coming to me saying that so-and-so and so-and-so was doing this. And uh, it, it really pissed me off because of like what someone else shared. It ran them out of certain meetings and it made them actually as a whole not want to come back to Narcotics Anonymous at all. Um, and these people I actually had relationships with, like, like they helped me get clean. Like I never experienced this behavior from them, but that doesn't mean that if I'm hearing it from multiple people that it's not really happening. Right. So it made me hot. And, um, 
I decided to be God, you know, <laughs> and after a meeting, go confront one of them. And um, mm -hmm. I confronted him on my own and um, it got loud and it almost turned into a fist fight. Um, and it wasn't pretty. And I don't think it really did anything either. Um, and I think also the fact that if someone comes to someone, like just one person goes to someone and points out a behavior that's not someone we talk to vulnerably on a regular basis, we may not hear it, you know? And I think that that might've been what happened. Um, I'm not proud of how I handled it. Like going to try to save the day and be like, yo, motherfucker, let these fucking women recover and stay the fuck away from them. Um, <laughs> Because it really is like life and death in here. And it is like last house on the block, no matter what fucking meeting it is. And it is true how what someone else was sharing. Like if we, there's a lot of us that when we have, um, when we have some experience in these rooms, like we get turned off by those meetings. And so we just stop going to them because we feel like, well, we're not part of the group, so it's not our job to go try to change the group, right? But it's like, it, it, it is, it's interesting how you pose, like, what can we do? Um, because it, you know, there's, there's anonymity, but then there's also, like, safety. Mm -hmm. and, and we want to be able to take care of the newcomers no matter what. And, um, I liked how you said treating it like a 12 step call and bringing more than one person. And maybe what we need to start, maybe something that we could do is like, make sure it's same sex that's, or same gender or same. I don't mean to offend anybody, but you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> going to that person as wow. opposed to how I was this, this feisty little bitch going up to this ex NFL mm -hmm. player and like mm -hmm. thinking I could like do some shit, you know, and um, they're not going to hear that. Mm -hmm. Like, and I feel like because it's so talked about like women getting with women and men getting with women, like, I think it is our responsibility to call each other out on our bullshit. And, um, and maybe if we are of the opposite sex, Maybe we can go to someone that we trust that knows that person that can go and bring it to them and hope that they can carry the message for us in a 12 step type setting. But I just, yeah, that, um, I, I laughed when I saw this on this workshop schedule and, uh, I'm glad we're talking about it. I really am, but thanks for letting me share. Thank you. Mm, come on. That's a full room. I'm Bruce. I'm an addict. Hey, Bruce. Bruce. I'd like to thank God for Narcotics Anonymous and uh, keeping me another day clean. And uh, so good to be in a workshop. And I'm, I, I, I just wanted to come up here and share and have some courage. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how many people's in here or wherever. Uh, so this is my experience. Uh, so yeah, did some research on this and. Uh, that predatory behavior, you know, uh, when I came in, I, I chased a girl up in here, right? And uh, so that's what I did. I chased, I manipulated. I tried to do whatever I could to, to fill some kind of void that I had that I, I, I could fill, right? Nothing was never enough. And uh, so I had that same mentality, whether y'all knew it or not, uh, it was all, all bad, right? And uh, so like predatory behavior could be anything, you know, uh, you know, for me, it, could, it was, uh, you know, other sex. Um, it could have been like, um, you know, coming in here and shaking a pill bottle or something like that. You know, that, that could be it, you know. You know, to, uh, okay. to attract the prey, right? And uh, so, like, 
you know, I have an example in my head, you know, I was thinking like I was the, the cheetah trying to get the, the, the gazelle over there, you know, the young fawn, you know what I mean? That couldn't move fast, you know what I mean? That's what the ones I was after, right? And, uh, but, you know, I've grown so much in this program. And, you know, like, like John said, you know, uh, when I came to this program this last time, right, I, I needed to work on myself. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And, you know, my motives were so wrong. So what I did, I came in, I heard the people that were sharing. I got a sponsor, started talking to my sponsor, started working some steps, uh, prayed every day, uh, just talking to y'all, you know what I mean? Telling y'all where I'm at, what's going on in my sick little head, you know what I mean? And uh, trying to get some feedback and, uh, you know, being open-minded and willing to change, right? And uh, so, like, you know, I, I came in here and it was a little after a year before I even got in a relationship, right? Because I, I, that's what they told me. I started making suggestions. And, uh, you know, it, it, it gets better, you know what I mean? It got very different, you know? Uh, got a very strong relationship. You know, with uh, everybody in my life, you know, even even all the new people that I, I meet, um, you know, and I don't want to be considered that uh, don't, don't go near that guy. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I want to be a role model. Right. I want to be an example. Right. Because uh, that's how I learned when I came in here. I saw y'all. Y'all were my example, you know, because uh, I need to see this stuff work. You know, I, you can't tell me I, I didn't see it work. Right. And uh, so I hung around with the strong people in NNA, you know what I mean? Um, the strong women, the strong men, you know what I mean? And they teach me so much, you know, because they're doing it. You know what I mean? I'm seeing this. And, uh, you know, I just want to, I, I want to be somebody that somebody can come to, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? This is my safe place, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is where I recover, you know, no matter what that looks like, it's going to be a safe place for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm never going to be running out of a room no more. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have to live like that no more. You know what I mean? And, uh, man, it's a good day to be cleaning it up. That's right. In a, in a meeting, you know what I mean? In a workshop at uh, Gritna 40, you know what I mean? Uh, it's been a couple of years, you know what I mean? And, uh, so I'm so thankful for the committee, you know, for doing it. And, uh, man, I love all you guys. Thanks for letting me share. I share it. Uh, I also had somebody ask me to speak at this thing, so this is for the moment also. Nice. You um, still get to speak. But yes. I like this topic. I really do like this topic. Predatory to me is, um, and I'm not going to stare at you, I don't like looking at people I talk. Predatory, yeah, predators, you have something I want, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get it, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what it is or how. It so we have experience with this also. But I never heard that before, predator, prey, witness. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I really like that. I had a, somebody with a lot of time tell me something. You know, what's the worst, well, basic predator, usually about sex, right? So what's worse than a woman selling herself for sex? Me saying it's okay by paying for it. Mm. So <clears throat> when I think about it that way, witness, <clears throat> what's, what's the bad part of that? Seeing it happen and not saying nothing about it. That's right. Mm -hmm. so, or talking with the guy while he's doing it. Not saying nothing to him. But, you know, I heard a lot, what is the solution? I don't know what the solution is. I know what we did. Um, somebody's talked about, I know the spiritual principles. You know, you talk to them one on one, that doesn't work. Then you take a couple people, mm -hmm. talk to them in private, that doesn't work. Then you get a group and you talk to them in public. That's what we did. We had a guy, stories irrelevant. It was a predator. But we didn't have a lot of women in our groups because uncomfortability. So I think there was one, two, three, four, five of us that in them after we uh, did the readings and opened the meeting, the meeting got directed at him. He didn't listen. And I guess he would be what you would call a whale as far as point of time. Um, but he wasn't even a member of the whole group, but he still come there and it made a lot of the women uncomfortable. Just called him out by name into the meeting, the chair pointed him out by finger. And there was a lot of women there that didn't even know this. But it would always start with simple things like, like, I don't think personally, I don't think 
females in NA should be friends on Facebook with males mm -hmm. in NA. Just because that's how this happens. Mm -hmm. They post a picture or whatever, and you all see him comment, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying, hey, God, why are you saying hey to when you're on Facebook? It's unnecessary. But, you know, I think it probably is best for the same sex to do it. Um, the one person and two people. But what really struck me about the whole thing that y'all said was when you said the prayer to pray witness, because I heard that other about, you know, the worst part is me paying for it. So, the bad part about the whole situation is the person that sees it and they can say anything. If you're not saying anything to that person, it comes up to find somebody like me. I'll say something to me. I don't care. <laughs> My, uh, me staying clean is infinitely more important than how you feel about me. Mm -hmm. and, and recovery is for everybody. <clears throat> Who am I to say, I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable because that's what I want, therefore you don't get recovered. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I have strong opinions and I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I like my opinions. But I do think women are precious and they should be protected. I'm not saying they can't do it on their own. I know what we're talking about. But I think there are certain situations that's where, <laughs> where, you know, somebody of the same sex should do something, step up and be a man. You know, do, it, do it. I mean, your spiritual principles and the steps try to make me a better person, right? I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm supposed to love other people, right? Isn't uh, taking care of other people also a form of love? Mm -hmm. And trying to do what's right for the right reason, not because you have something I want. Uh, but that's what we did in our group. And he's never been back. Mm. He went back to his own group. Good so, shit. Um, that's what worked for us. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks Rod. <laughs>
you know, when I was out there chasing everything except for, you know, filling that, that, you know, God recovery size hole, however you want to put it inside of me with, with everything around me, it continued to keep me sick. That's right. And I kept going back out. And, um, you know, this, this time around, I did the same shit. I jumped into a relationship really early in recovery, but I approached it in a way that I never had in the past. You know, I was like, okay, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at my track record and it's fucking shit. I need to do something different here. Um, that didn't keep me out of the relationship, but you know, it kept my emotions out of it, which actually saved my ass. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that was a little over a year ago. So it's been a year, a little over a year since I've had any type of interaction with, with any of that stuff. And, yeah. um, Good shit. you know, it's, it's, it's hard. but it's getting to the point now where I'm like, okay, you know, I did the time I, I, I've, I've done some steps. I've worked on myself. I recognize my shortcomings and I've, I've, you know, addressed those. And I'm, I'm like, like, okay, like I really want to get back into a relationship now. And this shit's been coming up in my, my head a lot because I'm like, how do I even approach that now? You know, I go, I go to, you know, I work full-time job. I, if I'm not at work, I'm either in a meeting doing some type of NA related shit or I'm working on my motorcycle. That's, that's my life, you know? And uh, so trying to figure out how to like trek that new road of approaching that and not approaching it in a, in a, in a predatorial type way is new territory. And it's, and it's, confusing and you know especially with like knowing that i'm you know the whole manipulator salesman type bullshit that that's my track record like i have to like constantly check myself with like how i'm approaching this shit and making sure that my intentions are correct before i i even like bring it to the fucking table and um it's hard like i said you know i i i go to meetings i go to work you know i, I have my activities on the side but it doesn't really come up a lot unless I'm in situations like this. You know, I'm in a situation where there's a lot of females around me that I've never met before, you know, and situations where I know that it's going to be a very short interaction type where I can get, get away with my old behaviors, you know, and those feelings are coming up and, uh, yeah, at least I'm, I'm here, I'm voicing it, I'm talking about it, because I don't want to be that person anymore, and I don't want to go back to the same behaviors that led me to getting high. And um, great group, guys. You know, I really, I really appreciate it. You know, I can't say what the rest of this weekend's going to bring, but I know I took a lot away from this group, and I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Dre. I've been hearing the topic on, uh, uh, I guess, predators and, and relationships, basically. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm an addict and I'm addicted to anything, look good, feel good, uh -huh. good smell good. Yeah. You know? yeah, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like, uh, you gotta be careful about how we treat people because you don't really know who going you're gonna have to ask to be your sponsor one day. <laughs> right? It's like I might have a certain amount of clean time today, but tomorrow, if I don't do what I'm supposed to, I'll be in a dilemma again. And, 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 and you know uh, how I can really get there is uh acting out on a feeling that are going to cause me to go back out of you. Because what, what addicts do? Addicts you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, you know they, they told me when I went up. Uh, and by the way, uh, this August the, the, the 3rd, if I live in the creek don't rise, I have 18 years clean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, I remember coming into the fellowship, and for the first three years, my story was I'm, in, I'm engaged with, the, with this lady, she ain't in the fellowship, and uh, I don't date women in the fellowship because I think this is, a, this is my story now. 
I think this is a hospital where we are all trying to uh, get clean and we shouldn't harm nobody. That's right. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I had a flat tire after that third year. Uh, 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 I think my engine ran high. Well, guess who picked me up? There, 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 there's attic in the room, that, and she was beautiful. There's attic in the room, picked me up, carried me to my house, and uh, that so I could get with my get with my wife to uh, to uh, get my car serviced. I don't know how it happened, but <laughs> the next three or four weeks, I was at that lady's house yeah. doing the thing right there. Now here's what I done say. I done say I don't say I don't think women that narcotics phenomenal and I'm married and I'm all I'm, I'm, and I'm doing this and that. Mm. But see, we have to be careful about how we call ourselves addressing others because what you gonna do today when you when it's your turn? And no thank you ain't gonna get no turn. Mm. See, we talk to people like we all gonna ride. You you know what? And the first on oh, the just one day on the first page, it, it talks about when you only give a daily reprieve. What that mean? That mean I, what I do right or what I'm trying to work on, I do it one day at a time. <laughs> In the morning when I wake up, I got to redo it again. Mm -hmm. See, see, see. Uh, some people got the, got an the idea that you get fixed around here. That, that you get well around here. Hey, you don't get well around here. You know what? Guess what you got to learn? I'm, a, 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 I'm sick. I'm going to forever be sick. And if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, do the 12 steps. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to, for, 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 first of all, first, you know what? When I first come in, I need to get me take some suggestions. They say, make 90 beats in 90 days. And, and then they say, get you a sponsor. Mm -hmm. And they start say stuff like, keep coming back. You know, they, and then the, why they say keep coming back is because recovery is what happens in the meeting. See, I can say I'm recovering and skipping all the meeting and trying to get with certain people. Then, you know what? I set myself up for failure. See, see, I can't wear this thing so tight. Well, I can't deal with white people, black people. Indian, Chinese, or whatever. See, if it's not called a normal, I got to learn how to love everybody because if I don't do that, I'm headed for self-destruction, right? That was the same place I was at when I first got here. See, today, in my new way to live, right, even though I might be a predator today, the steps give me a chance not to be that tomorrow or the next day. Right. All I got to do is work the step. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, might, I might be a whore today, but, but, if, but, 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 if, but if I work the steps on being a whore, I won't be a whore the next day. The next day. But see, and then look at him. Guess what? Sooner I think right here. Yeah. I'm delivered from stealing or whatever else I was doing, I done picked up something else. And I said, you know, damn, I thought I was, I, I, that was over, but I got, I find out, I ain't really got nowhere. But, but you know what? My main goal is, if I stay clean, I got a chance to work on something. Mm -hmm. See, see, you know what? I, all I got to do is be aware of I got the problem, mm. right? A lot of times you ain't got to tell me, oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that stuff. So a lot of you know what I make a decision to go do it, mm -hmm. and, 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 and then when somebody see me, then I want to act like I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. But then, but you know what? I want to you know what? It's like you know, I was a good rat, no good joker that 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 uh didn't want to do right before I got here. You know what I mean? I be here and would not want to do right sometimes. And try to blame it on my character defect, which is me. My character defect ain't nobody but me. But, but, but see how I stay away from 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 all that nonsense here to him. And the first step says, "I gotta get on." Mm -hmm. Meaning, 
I got 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 I to start letting somebody in, meaning stop trying to think I know something to tell you that you know all. Uh, you know what? I ain't never met you before. Well, and, and you beautiful. And, and instead of making, let's let him. Mm -hmm. You feel it. Instead of of you and, and, and try to ask you for some sex. Don't give me no one because I don't mean well. See, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't do that. See, that's how I'm going to say you. I don't mean well. It's okay. You're going to try to walk up you. to somebody <laughs> and say, I've got women doing the men all the time. Matter of fact, man, you. you can't get that nowhere soon, can you? You know what I'm saying? So, so, so here's the thing. Well, what, 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 you walk up to somebody, right? Your phone is not right. They can hear your motives ain't right when you first come up there, mm -hmm. right? You know, it. they know your motives ain't it. right. Here, you know, a lot of times we use this stuff the wrong way because here's the thing. It's always the part I play that I don't ever really want nobody to know about. Mm -hmm. See, it's the part mm -hmm. that I play that, that, that mm -hmm. caused me to be the mess I'm in. See, if I want to stop being in the mess, they told me if I want to, you know what? They said, if you want to stop getting fucked, stay out of position. You know what I'm saying? That's just the bottom line. And, and, and then, yeah. see, I ain't no perfect model for the majority of right. I ain't no perfect model. So, so a lot of times, we don't need to be faking it before we make it. We just need to tell the truth. And, 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 and you know what? Recovery is all way. You know what I'm saying? And this program you can get free as you want to be mm -hmm. oh you got you know what today i've been a deacon in my church two times oh, to, well, from the program <laughs> i can't <laughs> but, uh, but the people still ask me <laughs> to be a right. deacon i told them i said i ain't well they said well you know what we ain't neither we just trying to do okay so uh uh a lot of the, the ministry they want me to die uh, they, they'll get me to try to speak at their church. I said, I'm not well. That's, that's okay. They ain't well either. But, but, but here, here's the thing. Even though I got a high power, who I call Jesus Christ, I ain't saying with my high power. You know what? He, he, he's there for me. He protect me. But it's only if I do the right thing for the right reason, right? And when I don't do the right thing for the right reason, I don't beat myself up with no baseball bat. I give me a little feather, put myself a little bit, get back to the book study and say, and, and, and matter of fact, I, I, I try to lead two book studies a week. I get back to the book study and, 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 I, and I go go over my, my work and help somebody else. See, see, I ain't gonna get nowhere if I don't help somebody. It, it, it's all about being honest with, with, with you know what? They said, be to your own self, be true. I ain't got to be true to everybody else. I just got to be true to myself. And once I start, stop trying to uh, walk around like, okay, I'm going to put a sad set in him. I, 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 got, I, got, I got on a shirt, right? Yes. When I first got the shirt, the shirt they, they overcharged me for the shirt, and I paid. They didn't manipulate me. I manipulated myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When I got the hat, they overcharged me for the hat. This was going on in my head. Mm -hmm. I'm an addict. I got addict thinking. Mm -hmm. When they talk, when I got the hat, they overcharged me for the hat. I paid for it anyway. But because I just said I'm addicted to what? Look good, feel good, smell good, taste and taste good, good mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and you know what? And, and, and a lot of times when I just be honest with who I am and, and where I'm at, my life be better, man. You know, you know, like today, I'm just glad to be on a meeting. I heard all y'all saying, I said, I gotta say something. Mm -hmm. Thank you for letting me say something. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Alice. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. I'm Sierra Maddox. Yes, Sierra. Um, <laughs> yeah, this one's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
you know, on the on the way over here, um, my boyfriend and I were talking about, you know, like what our definition of like predatory behavior really was. Mm. And um, and then, you know, uh, like listed a, a long list of all the predators in our area. Um, <laughs> I'm still a little sick and not quite spiritual. I haven't made it through the, the whole convention yet. Um, I'm yeah. hoping to go home in better shape than I came here in. But um, so I, you know, as I was listening to everybody speak and thank you guys so much um, for speaking, I had looked up like the definitions of like predatory, predator, predatory behavior. Um, because I think often we hear predatory behavior and we think about um, people with some clean time preying on a newcomer. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think of it a little bit differently. And, you know, there was a handful of different ones, um, different definitions on here. I mean, there was even one that said in the late 16th century, um, they related it to plundering. So all of a sudden I started um, imagining all the predators in my area dressed as pirates. Um, but I, um, I also think of the people in Narcotics Anonymous that, um, show like aggressive behavior in the rooms um like aggressive behavior like in a meeting or at fucking area or you know because it some some of the definitions in here talk about you know like um you know acting this way for like personal gain and i i just i think of a lot of different things besides just the person with some clean time who wants to go and sleep with a newcomer um and i'm i'm not downplaying that by any means we see that a lot but i uh, my, I don't know if it's so much a question or more of like a concern of like, how do we deal with somebody in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous who shows like predatory and aggressive behavior? Like, and if, you know, you had mentioned the the 12 step thing, you know, um, talking to these people about it. What happens when you talk to these people about it and they just don't give a fuck? Mm -hmm. Um you know, like we're taught in Narcotics Anonymous to like respect everybody's right to be here, right? Like I respect your right, you respect my right. And like, at what point does it go, um, like at, at what point do we like have a conversation about like, how do we how do we approach these types of behaviors when they don't care about like their behaviors, you know? And I would love to believe like, you know, if they stick around in Narcotics Anonymous long enough that they're their attitudes will change. But like, I can think of a handful of people in my area who have a, you know, to me, a significant amount of clean time. Um, granted, clean time doesn't equal recovery. That's and I'm lot. aware of that. Um, but like, at what point, um, at what point do we start having more conversations about like how to deal with those types of aggressive behaviors? You know, a couple of different people talked about, you know, meetings where, um, you know, newcomers or, you know, people with time to feel that they don't want to go back to that meeting because of whether it's predatory behavior. But I also think a lot about aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, I stayed in a home group for a long time where I was the only woman in that home group because I felt a responsibility as a member of Narcotics Anonymous to be there in case another woman walked in the door. Right. And by the grace of God, there was no bullshit predatory behavior in that room. But I think often, like more often than not, like we run into situations like that and we come from a small area. Um, we're from the Coquina Coast. Hi, sponsor lady. She's on Zoom. Um, but uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, we come from a small area where like I, I think about that a lot, you know, like how do we handle those types of situations and um, and whose responsibility is it? You know, like we talked about like the witness, you know, and I think we're all witnesses to like behaviors, whether they're aggressive or predatory. And it's just like it's um, it's really kind of a concern of like where um where do we draw the line between like respecting somebody's right to be here and their right to recover and calling them out on things like predatory and aggressive behavior so that's all i've got thank you are you guys is it over no. oh i thought y'all were saying okay hey my name's ayetta and i'm a I'm an addict. Hi, hi, hi. Was me. I'm an addict. And uh, thank you so much for coming up here and sharing about that, both of you. And I'm really glad when I saw this meeting up here because I actually was sharing about this a little bit before in my, in my home group, just about a situation that occurred to me like 20 years ago that, you know, I don't, I don't really talk much about it, but I was like, and, I, and when I share about it, like how I, I have been um, preyed on and I've been witness to it. And I was like, well, and I would make jokes like, okay, well, that was 20 years ago. That was in 2000. So maybe it's not happening anymore. 
maybe no one's no one's preying on people anymore. Maybe yeah. that's what it is because it's okay. You know, this back then, but you no, know, really, like realistically, it is it is happening. It is going on. We just don't talk about it enough. Mm-hmm. And I I want to share a little bit about my story because listening to you all, for the people that did come up and share, I realize now that I am all three. I thought that I was just a pre- being preyed on and a witness, but I actually was a predator and didn't realize it. And I think someone earlier was sharing about, so what I would do is as a newcomer um, and like, you know, this is, this is way before I got clean. I didn't really, I didn't really want to be clean. I was, I was in my, in my twenties and it was like 99, 2000 and people would, people would share. And when I would hear people in the meeting room share about how they had relapsed, I would automatically gravitate towards them Mm -hmm. and talk to them because now I got maybe a a possible using buddy because I I really didn't, I really kind of didn't understand what was going on. Again, I was still in the realms thinking that it was a magic pill somewhere that I just didn't get, that I, I wasn't given. And when I would come to meetings, and I mean, it didn't matter, girls or guys, it just so happened that there were more guys in the meetings, they would approach me. And, you know, and they would pray on me, but I would, I would welcome it. I would welcome it because I, I wanted, I wanted to, to figure out what I could do to get them high or we could get high together or something. And a lot of times, a lot of the guys were really serious in recovery, but what would happen is the guys would take me to get my drugs. They would, they would have like 15 years, some 20 years, and they would take me to get my drugs. And in my mind, it was okay because, hey, look, I'm doing, I'm, I'm, look, I'm going to a meeting. Um, they're taking me to get my drugs. They're not getting high, so they're clean. So I'm kind of halfway clean a little bit. And I mean, this is really in my in my thinking that I was still kind of being okay because I'm still in the fellowship. I'm still in the meeting. I, I'm getting high, but I'm getting high with somebody that's in recovery that has time. So I'm kind of clean a little bit halfway, you know. So even though you know we're we're doing, I'm exchanging sexual behavior, sexual favors for them. They're still they're still clean the entire time. And this will go on, and eventually. That one person that did it for many years with me, he ended up dying years later because he finally relapsed Mm. on his drug of choice. And I found out later on when I called him and his mom told me he had passed away, he relapsed and it just took him out. And, uh, but I, I didn't, I, I still didn't grasp that. Like it, like it wasn't discussed. It wasn't, I didn't under that white pamphlet. I didn't read that part. I didn't, I didn't read that part. And, and I, I, I'm wondering what would have happened had I read that part? Would things have been different? Like you said, you didn't know, you know, you didn't know either. And the one girl that I met in the rooms in Lawrenceville, and she had a year, I might've had like maybe a week. And so she, I mean, we would meet up and we would, we would meet up in the middle of the meetings. We'd leave and we'd, we'd hook up, you know, we'd hook up, we'd, we'd do a little thing. And, and then later on, we ended up relapsing together. And then it got to the point where we relapsed and then, you know, I became her drug dealer. And then she would say things to me like, okay, if you don't bring me my drugs right now, I'm calling the police. I'm telling them that you're selling drugs. Like it was like a bunch of craziness that was going on, but it was all from in the beginning of us praying on one another. Mm-hmm. So that happened. And it wasn't until this time around and, and then I, this time around. And so now it, it, like, it's all serious now because and I realize now the, the program has whatever I'm looking for. If I'm looking for recovery, I'm going to get recovery. If I'm looking for drugs, I'm going to get drugs. If I'm looking for a sugar daddy, there are plenty of them. There are plenty of them to go around because whatever yeah. I speak and what I share about in a meeting, people are listening. No, people are seriously listening. They're listening and they're going to use it and they're going to talk to me after the meeting and whatever, they'll just take it from there. We'll just take it from there. And that's just how it goes. And I think now what it is, because I, I speak differently and I carry myself differently, I'm not seeing any of that anymore. I haven't gotten prayed on this, this go around because I'm really serious about my recovery. And there was actually one person that I did meet who had 30 plus years, who was a predator, who was banned from one of our meetings for being a predator. But see, I didn't see that side of him because I didn't carry myself that way. He, he really helped me out and stuff, but there were certain little things he would say. Like I would, I would be in a meeting and he'd say, well, there are no good looking girls are not coming. I'm like, well, let me see who's in the room. And then like, like he would like literally tell me that, like he wouldn't come if there were no good looking girls. So I'm like, okay. But then eventually I found out later he was banned from our meeting, but he, to me, he was a good guy, but that that doesn't mean that he's good for everybody else. So that was like my witness of seeing what happens with people and seeing where things go and how he would be in denial. And I really am happy to see other people that, you know, former predators or, you know, that are trying to predators and recovery coming up and sharing about it because this guy I don't really think he really understood 
that he was a predator because when he, every time something would happen and he would get warnings from a clubhouse, he would always say, no, it's them. It's not me. They're the ones coming with me. Yeah. They're the ones doing this. It's not even me. I'm telling you, they came to me and I ran, you know, I'm like, he would say this. He was like the biggest victim. And I'm just like, you don't see what's going on, do you? And so, but so I, I see now from both sides that you know, some people just don't know where they are. And I know now where I am mm -hmm. and I know, okay, what I say is important. And I have to show this to my sponsees now, now that I have four years clean to show, you know, the women out there that it's very important for, yeah, it really is kind of important for women to stick with women and men stick with men because that's just how it is. There's all, and I don't, I'm not saying it's everybody, but even me, even me as, as a gay woman, it doesn't matter if I'm gay, but guys don't care. The clothes are coming off. It doesn't matter if I'm just like a guy right now, if I have guy clothes on, the clothes are coming off. They're okay. They don't care. It doesn't matter. But yeah, women need to stick with women, men with men and just keeping it kind of short. And then, I mean, I've even gone, I've even gone to um, gay meetings before. And I've actually said the wrong thing and said something, I shared something um, intimate um, and one guy who was gay actually thought he took me out. We went out to, for coffee and he thought it was a date. And I was like, wait, really? Like, and he, he explained to me what I shared about made him think that I was open to doing stuff. I'm like, no, no, no. That was from my past. I wasn't saying I was trying to do that now, you know? And he's like, oh, and he kind of got upset about it. Now, it was just like, really? So yeah, I realized, but it's okay now because I'm, I'm not a stranger to recovery anymore. And I understand now, but I, I, I can totally see where messages can be mixed uh -huh. and things can be like, mis, you know, misinterpretation. So again, it's really good that we have this. And I actually uh -huh. had somebody who I matched with on Tinder that was um, a, a lady in recovery. And we started talking for a little bit. And I told her, she said she had 13 years. I told her at this time, I had like two years. She's like, oh yeah, you're a newcomer. I, I can't do that. I'm like, what? I thought it was over a year. She's like, no, that, no, mm -mm, that's, that's still I'm like, okay. Well, so yeah, so now people know about it now and this is good. I, and, and people need to keep reading that white pamphlet because see, I didn't know about it. I'm sure a lot of people don't. So yeah, um, this is great. Thank you for, for the topic. Thanks for letting me share. Thank you, Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Hey, Bruce. predatory behavior. I, I can't really say that I, I was a predator uh, in, in recovery. I, I, I came, I'm one of the guys that came in, I was baking on the outside. I had my own thing going on on the outside when I came into recovery. And so uh, I, I, that doesn't make me any, any, any special or anything. It's just that uh, in my case, uh, that wasn't really my focus when I got here. But um, last Monday or Tuesday, I celebrated 35 years of uninterrupted. <laughs> I sponsored a lot of guys with this problem. Okay. And, um, you know, and, and the thing that I try to do, first of all, newcomers are going to be newcomers no matter what. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're sick. Okay. They look at each other, they're in love, they're making plans and all that shit. They got all that shit. Okay. That's just the way it is. That is not going to stop. I think the thing with this hair, and then another thing, we're not under surveillance at any time. Right. Okay. They, they read that. Right. Okay. And, um, and, and, and I think that what, what I tell my guys it, it, when they, when they come to me with this hair, first of all, I tell my guys, look, I'm not the sex police, okay? I'm not the sex cop, okay? I'm not here. That ain't my role here, okay? My role is to bring you to the steps of recovery that you have a spiritual experience that you get in contact with the God of your understanding and he gets to work for you. I'll let him correct you. He's more than capable of correcting, okay? He doesn't need my help, okay? And when, when they come with this here, I steer them back. Like, like, you know, I don't, I don't let that conversation continue. Oh, all right, you, I heard enough about that. What step are you working on? Who are you helping in this program? What are you doing for Narcotics Anonymous? When was the last time you prayed? I bring it back to the recovery because somebody has to bring them back to the center or they'll just keep wandering off. 
you know? And I believe that's what sponsorship, uh, uh, sponsorship is all about. You know, um, I, don't, I really am not a, a, you know, some kind of guru on uh, uh, relationships and, and, and stuff like that. But, but I, I know for me, I, even how long I've been here, if a woman comes up to me and asks me for a ride, I can give her a ride maybe once or twice, but that's it. That's it. Okay. Because I'm going to go where I'm going to go. I'm just going to right. go there. I don't give a shit how long I've been here. If I, if I keep hanging around the shit, I'm going to go there. That's it, period. I already know that. There ain't going to be no I'm in recovery. Look at me. I don't want to touch you. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good guy now. And me, you can shit. talk. Yeah, and right. We're going to go over here and talk and all that freaking shit. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's fantasy land. For me, see what I'm saying? I know what I, I know how far I can go, you know? And if she looks really, really good, it may only be that one time, you know? And, and, and so the thing is, is that, the thing is, is that, you know, behaviors that are negative, I found, found out that if I keep doing them, I pay a price, okay? You know, and if I want to keep paying the price, well, I'm going to keep getting, if I keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to keep getting what I'm getting. You know, I am, uh, I am not really, uh, like, I am not really, uh, uh, the, you know, the relationship type of guy, but I can tell, I can tell my guys this, whatever woman you're chasing, your God and your program and your step work and her don't belong in the same basket. Okay. You're putting her in the recovery basket. You got work to do here. You got to go to meetings. You got to get on your knees and pray. You got to meditate. Okay, you got to take out the pen and paper and do an inventory. What the, What I can't understand, and I some, need somebody to explain it to me. What does she got to do with that? What does one have to do with the other? Somebody put something in the mix and made a salad out of this thing. <laughs> See, that's what happened. See, you know, and uh. You know, I mean, you know, I like I said, so we're, we're human beings. You know, I, I, one of the, one of the things that I haven't achieved in in my clean time is is being in love. I, I spoke about that at the last meeting. I had relationships, but I've never been in love. Okay, and the sad part about, and I think it relates to predatory behavior because I was a, I was a predator, but I wasn't a predator here. I was a predator outside, outside of the walls. And know who brought it to my attention? My sponsees. Mm -hmm. They say, Bruce, you do what, what we do, but you don't do it here. I didn't want it. I felt like if I'm not doing it here, I'm not that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to come here to do that. You can do that shit out there. That's right. You don't gotta come to Narcotics Anonymous to be a predator. Right. There's a whole bunch of ways, you know? But uh, the thing is, is that, you know, I, I, I got this thing about never being, not being in love. I, I've had good women. The whole, only, pr the bad part about having good women is that when I, they come, first of all, they come very far and few in between. But when I did have them, I didn't know I had them. Oh, oh. I didn't know I had a good woman until I got the bad ones. Mm -hmm. The bad ones told me that I had the good ones, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, you know, I just let them get away. You know, I just let them get away. You know, if you got somebody in your corner, and you know if they're in your corner, okay? You know if they're hitting for you, man. Yeah, we, we ain't stupid people. We're, we may be sick, but we're not sick doesn't equate to stupid, okay? If you got somebody in your corner, and you know they're in your corner, and they're worth holding on to, man, do it. T take it. Take my, take my advice man, on this one. Hold on to that. Hold on to that person, okay? Because it, it may be a long time. It may be never that you may get another person like that again. Because that shit is not like Walmart. You just don't go pick that up off, off the shelves anytime you feel like it. You know, it does, uh, from, from my experience, it doesn't work that way. You know, it, like some people tell me about their relationships, man. And I'd be saying, man, I, I'd be saying, damn, I wish I had that. You know, or if I see women sit up here and talk about, you know, uh, how lonely they are and they share their, what, what turns me on is a woman in recovery that tells the truth about herself and, and, and sh talks about, you know, her, her negative behavior, how she relied upon God, how she got out of it, and how she's a woman today. I'm sitting there saying, that brought us. She's sexy. Oh, man, I wish she would. I wish she'd blow my way. You know, I, I, I want to get up and say, I'll take you right now. <laughs> okay? 
you know, I mean, that's just the way it is. But I don't know if you got anything out of that, but if you got somebody and they're worth it, keep up, keep our uh, hold on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone for coming. I especially like to thank um, our workshop speakers and all the other participants that participated today. Um, I want to make a couple of announcements. Let's see. Our left tradition states our public relations policy is based on traps or rather promotion. We need always maintain personal anonymity at the level of fresh, ready on films. Yeah. The primary purpose of our public relations effort is to tell the story of Narcotics Anonymous and what our program offers to the still suffering addict. Members of the press are often attracted to our convention and we welcome their interest. However, we do not disclose our last names in the media or identifiable members of a Narcotics Anonymous. If members of the press approach you, please direct them to a member of the convention planning panel. Board of Directors, or the Public Relations Subcommittee. Smoking is allowed in designated smoking areas. If you have any questions about where to find these areas, please see a member of the Convention Planning Panel. These members can be identified by blue committee ribbons on their shirts. Also, we still have raffle tickets for sale. Um, there's a bunch of raffles that they're giving away. There's still entertainment tickets for sale, and there are some banquet tickets for sale, but those are getting slim. So if you want them, y'all, please pick them up. Okay? All right. Let us circle up and close with the version of Serenity Prayer. Do it. 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 Do it.